let's dive into the Isha world. And if you don't like Isha, well then... That's too damn bad! Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is meta X, Isha, press enter. And as you can see, there's not much going on. I have a banner that randomly pops up with some text every time, but that's not what I wanna show. What I wanna show is something that I really like is that from Isha, I can tell if a command is valid or invalid just by typing it out. So for example, let's say I type in QWERTY. As you can see, the text comes out all in red because it's not exactly a command that's valid or found in path. But if I type a command that is is path, like TLDR, it pops up green. And that way I know that, hey, this command is actually gonna work and it's actually found in the path. Another thing that I have is the git prompt. Now, both the highlighting of commands and the git prompt is from two external packages. And those are the only external packages that I use. Well, kinda, you'll see right now. But anyways, the git prompt is pretty nice because you can customize it to how you want. I believe I extended the one that comes out with the third party one, but let me show you because it shows not only the virtual M information. So this is a virtual M in Python. There, there are things called virtual M's to control your environment, to not clutter the global one. And this reads the tilde just says, hey, this is my home directory, but let's go into org mode or into that Emacs. If I press enter, it will automatically take me there. So as you can see, I don't have to do CD and then dot Emacs to take me there. It will simply just do it if I type in the directory. And as you guys saw, it turned green to tell me that, hey, that dick directory does exist. And for some reason, the color messed up, but let's not worry about that. Anyways, here's what I wanted to show. That main, the little git status shows up here as well. And that's pretty cool. That's essentially all I really need from a terminal with the uh, occasional history popping up like uh, let's do something tldr dash dash so if i just do tldr by itself nothing pops up because this command is not in the history ring but if i do uh, let's say help it pops up so now if i do tldr again so it completes the command and then if you look at that the dash dash help pops up so if i want to select it i just press tab or i can do oops or i can do enter as well and it will autofill so this is nice because you know, it pops up the history and you don't have to do much. So I try to emulate the fish shell here. So as more history as you can get, you know, the more relevant it'll become. But also I have some completions such as if I do CD, I can do press tab and it'll pop up all the one folders that I have. So for example, I have etc, org, barg, alpha, lisp, to do. What the heck, I have it to do? That's interesting. I'll look into that later. I have the cast, cache, quopa, chat You see a bunch of stuff that I have in here that some of them may be relevant, may not, but yeah. Now these are just small, simple little things that help me every day in life when I'm using eShell because eShell is pretty much what I use for 90% of the time and then the other 10% I use bterm and that's something else. I have uh, the fish shell hooked up to bterm so that's pretty nice so I, I like the fish shell feature so I'm trying to slowly figure out how to move those features into eShell that way it becomes super amazing and hopefully I don't even need to use the bterm but sadly I still do because there are as if you know about eShell, then you know it's just a shell, it's not a terminal emulator. So vterm is an emulator, so you can run graphical term, graphical applications. eShell e you can't because it's just a shell. Okay, enough of that, let's go into the configuration. Okay, so here we are in my configuration. There's a few things going on, but I'll get to them in a second. I just wanna show you that, hey, there's only two packages that I actually use, the syntax highlighting, which is the command one, and the eShell git prompt. Now I was using eShow auto fish history to replicate that fish uh, feature that you, if you use fish, then you know what I was talking about. Otherwise, don't worry, I'll also show it. But anyways, let's go ahead and start with the configuration. And one thing before I start is that I did steal a few random snippets from AllShell, which is a package that is not a Melpa, but is still pretty darn cool. Let's check it out. Okay, so what do we have right here? It says, as you can see, it has some pretty handy, cool features. So if you like, you can go ahead and just, you know, copy those snippets that you'd need. That's what I did, but they're still pretty great. So what is AllShell? He wrote AllShell to extend eShell with these couple of features, which I did steal some of them, not gonna lie. So go ahead and pause it and give it a read. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, let's jump back to my configuration and let's start from the bottom top. So. One thing that you may or may have not noticed is that when I change directory, the buffer will change its name. Yes, that is right. If I change the if I change directory, it will also change the name. So let's go ahead. So pay attention to the directory. Right now it says eshell.emacs, but if I go to my org directory, 
it says org and if I go to what directories do I have here uh, if I go to my templates press enter it will also change templates so as you can see it changes directory now the reason why it says eshell.org is because this org folder is a sub direct is a sub module from the dot emacs dot d that's why so whatever your project uh, name is it will be eshell project name and then the directory so that's just a little heads up that way you guys don't get confused all right so let's go back now specific eshell outline that's just to be able to jump to the prompts more easily if you have multiple so for example let's say i have ls i have uh, tldr slash help i have uh, gcc now i'm just creating output right here so as you can see that was a lot of output and then let's do uh, python dash help okay so you're saying hmm you know what a few prompts back there was this I typed the command I don't remember what it was so if I just do outline now I can search through all those prompts that I did and that's what basically setting this regex is now I'm not going to show exactly the code because you guys I'll just link to my dot emacs you guys can look at that and you guys can copy and paste as you like I'm just telling you what it does next up is eshell setup keybinding that's interesting because if you look at my comment right here uh, right here it says that for some reason bind binding didn't work with eshell now i don't know if i was using use package at the time i wrote this probably not because this section is pretty old but yeah anyways this is what i have so i have a handy little key binding right here i don't think i ever used this i think i've only used it once to direct output to a buffer but in case you need to do that just tie it to a random to whatever key binding you like and do that and this shows up console with the history for eshell I might change this to actually be control R to emulate most terminals because control R is reverse I search in um, eShell. But if we just keep it consistent with control R, I think that should be fine. Next up is the eShell banner. Now I have a video that I made where every time eShell loads up, it, pick, it essentially picks out a joke and then just displays it. This is essentially the same thing. I'm using a program called Fortune, which is very old. A lot of old timers will know about this. And then also the same thing for cow say. It essentially just animates the cow. You can choose different animations, I believe. I think there's like a frog or something. Anyways, yeah, go ahead and go have fun. Uh, Google, Google around, whatever you want. I just have this because I like the spacing that it provides. I don't like, um, I lo don't like the prompt to be right here when I start. I want some spacing and this Pretty much just having this is pretty fun because sometimes it makes some jokes you know just random what i have next up is some juicy stuff so right here i have set up completion styles i have basic so essentially basic i so for completion styles i use something called orderless it's a pretty popular package but i don't want orderless here i just want basic completion so essentially what this does is just match it match the exact wording don't do any fuzzy matching or anything like that that's what i have here i just wanted player bones but uh matching I, because what i found when using the fuzzing is that it will bring up other results that i didn't want or were completely irrelevant and i found that setting it to basic essentially put hey if the command is ls only ls no ls with fuzzy matching that could bring up some other potential command or anything like that so that's what i found now core full count is essentially saying how many candidates I want to display if there's a match. So this is handy when I'm doing history because otherwise the default is 10 and 10 is way too much. Three might be too little. I might change it to five, but anyways, it just displays um, how many um, on the history or prompts or you know the candidates essentially. Next up, we have completion at point functions. So now these are the ones in charge of providing completions. What I have is pcomplete functions at point. So pcomplete in this scenario in this show is in charge of completing in cases where I'm typing CD and then I press tab and it'll pop up all the folders that are in there or commands like that. That's essentially what pcomplete is for at this stage. There's cape file, which as you can suggest auto completes the file path if it detects that I am trying to type out a, a file and then cape history is like the default just say hey if what I'm typing matches some an entry in the history then display it to me and this is usually the order that it goes first it tries p complete 
if it doesn't return anything it tries file and then if it doesn't return finally it returns history that's pretty much it now I have the custom section and most of these are pretty much self-explanatory so I'm not gonna go into them I will go into one that are I think are a bit more interesting for example the issue input his filter this essentially says hey if this passes the filter then save it into the history ring if it does not pass the filter then do not save it into the history ring which I find it very helpful so if we look at what I have it defined here you can see that I pretty much strip out empty lines and any commands that start with CD S or L because honestly I don't need those also right here I have LSD which is another I guess uh, equivalent of the LS command but yeah, it's, that's the only thing that I wanted to highlight because when I started doing the history, when you do a lot of CDs, that really clogs up the history ring and ain't nobody got time to filter out a bunch of CD stuff. So if you have a bunch of commands that you use like that, that are pretty much irrelevant and doesn't cost you anything, then just, I'd say, just update the issue filter and let them be filtered out. The next thing that I really like though is this, which I stole from Oshell, like I mentioned earlier. So syntax highlighting with cat, which that is pretty, pretty slick. So let me showcase that. So if I do cat and then I enter, let's say some, some file that I wanna look at, I can do cat, the file path, press enter. And then as you can see, the output will be colorized. Now, if you try it with your eShell, you will see that it's very plain. It's just black and white. It's the, essentially no syntax coloring. So this is pretty handy, which I greatly like. So I definitely stole it from all shell. So all credit with them. Make sure that you add this advice at the end. Otherwise you will not be able to figure out why it doesn't work. I, that's what happened to me. I realized that I was missing that. So go ahead. So this I already talked about syncing the buffer name when it happens, redirecting to buffer. I'm not gonna go into that and then outlining this so that you can find the prompts when doing outline mode. Okay, let's jump into the third party packages which are pretty small configurations. Essentially, I'm just saying, hey, I wanna use this eShow syntax package. I wanna make sure it's globally enabled. And I know I can configure this via the def face command in use package, but I, from the looks of it, this is before I knew I could do that. So I just have this set up so that it actually works or at least it shows with the colors that I want. So as you can see, pretty easy to set up, not very major, and even this could be limited if I didn't really care about it. So very minimal configuration. The same thing for git prompt. I say, hey, use eShow git prompt, and then I can choose which prompt do I want. Actually, let me go back and do this. So syntax highlighting, as you can see, if I jump into their GitHub, uh, as you can see, the same thing happens to them. But git eShow git prompt has multiple options as well as for the prompt. And as you can see through their picture. So it says, hey, you can, if you use the command use theme, it will print out this and then it'll let you pick which git prompt you want. Extremely handy and it's extremely easy to use. Just use this. I did something a little fancy and I extended that and I copied it and I just added it as an option. Now finally at the end, this is the package I used to use, I no longer use because I don't no longer need it. Okay so let's check out how it looks. So if we go all the way to look at the GIF, we can see next and then as you can see it starts filling out the prompt via history which is pretty nice, it's pretty amazing which I really liked. So that's just a very small feature of fish shell that I missed. So I was trying to get that through that. But at, ultimately, I decided not to because I mean, it's just one extra package and I don't really need that since I'm replicating that with the completion tab history uh, that I showed you guys over here. But yeah, this pretty much is an overview on my eShell setup. It's very minimal. I don't really have a lot of stuff because I don't need to. I'm not doing anything hardcore fancy. I just need to make sure, hey, 
the syntax highlighting works when there's command I get the nice prompt that I need to and then I get some completion when you know relevant stuff complete directory file cape history that's pretty much all I need if you guys notice my configuration I don't even use LSP or any type of smart completion it's all pretty dumb it's just words that have appeared in a different buffer and it just completes it that's the way I like to work I don't really like using those fancy things because most of the time they break on me I don't know why <laughs> but I've gotten used to it and I just keep things like this if you have something that you're using in the show that you just cannot live without let me know or if you completed more or added more things that make it look or give you that fish shell like feel because if we can replicate fish shell in eShell I think that is a major major win so eShell by itself is already amazing but I think adding those capabilities will make it even more just out of this world. But yeah, let me know. Remember, knowledge grows when it is shared. Thanks.